time to chill for a bit. So let's hope we're not going to drive right past the hunt now. Come on, mate. That's your scary eyes. <gasps> that's him, that's him, that's him. Nine ordinary people from all over Britain have become fugitives. We want to have our Thelma and Louise moment where we just literally go and do something crazy. This would be the most exhilarating thing I think I'll have ever have done. They've surrendered their identity and are trying to disappear in one of the most watched countries in the world. Now pursuing on foot, pursuing on foot. I was a police officer for nearly 15 years. I was a specialist firearms officer. Tracking them down is an elite team of hunters armed with the powers of the state. You cannot do anything electronically. If the fugitives can evade capture for 25 days... Come on, boys! Come on! ..they will win a share of £100,000. £100,000? Let's deny them the opportunity to get their grubby hands on all that cash. Let's get a clean sweep. Where will they hide? We have to block the road. He does marathons. I, on the other hand, struggle to walk from here to Aldi's. Who will they trust? They don't know we're in here right now, and that's what makes me feel so good. <laughs> de -cap, de -cap, de -cap. Nine fugitives. Stop there! 25 days. Stay where you are! A hundred thousand pounds. What would you do? Please, please, please. Nine fugitives are on the run. Go, 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 go. We've got CCTV for Carleen. We need to get after that coach. OK. Here we have her eyes on, eyes on. Carleen Grohl. Oh! You've been hunted. Alex and Bob. Hello, Mum. Every electronic communication leaves a trace. We have found a church. Jenkins Chapel. Jenkins Chapel. And we are staying there tonight. I'm worried about them getting that call. Regretting being too specific. The best thing to do is to get out of here very, very quickly. Cheers, don't look too hard. You cheeky. Is there any signs outside the exterior of the church? Any signs that they could potentially still be there? There is a nice tree line. I mean, if they're that cocky, they could now be taking a piss and having a look at us. Get the drone up, check that local area and report back in as soon as you can. The hunters are on the trail of father and son Bob and Alex Ailing after tracking them to a remote church in Cheshire. He's picking up something in the tree line. See the dots there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I suspect that is one person. It looks like it, but then a second ago... It, it looked, looked like two. It looked like two. If we run across that field now and that, and that moves, it's yeah. there. Oh, Christ. Hell. Oh, no. Is that them? Yeah. Please. Oh, please. Please. Please, 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 oh, God damn it. I'm so sorry. Is there a possibility that we could get a lift off of you, please? They say it's so strange, but we're on the run. We're hunted. We're, we're being hunted by a team of professional hunters. They're trying to kill you. No, no, they're trying to capture they're us. They're just trying to catch us. Thank you so much. Oh, Jilly, thank you. Oh, you don't know how much you've turned this round for us. We can't muck this up again, Al. No, we won't. We've rolled our luck something terrible. I think it's deer. Oh, f hell. Yeah, deer right there, right in front of it, where the drone was. Uh, 
OK, so where are we at now? The reason that they've dropped the phone is that they've realised that they've messed up by calling into Lynn. This is not a pre-planned deception. Mm. This is them acting on the hoof. They have been spooked. Because of the so use now of we the need to just, Yeah, They've realised they've messed up. OK. And now trying to backtrack. And that's where that little cheeky, we're going to leave the phone and the note, and that's a casual discard to throw us off the scent because they know that we're close and they know that they messed up. We are on such a high that we're practically through the roof. Knowing we were done for, and if it hadn't been for you stopping Jilly, Goodness knows we will be on our own way home now. Yeah. The fugitives have been on the run for over 24 hours. Bob and Alex gave the hunters the slip in Cheshire, and the others are also spreading out across the UK. Okay, so I think we need an update now as to where we are with regards to all the remaining fugitives. Joe and Dan. These are milkmen, pub singers. On the helicopter CCTV footage yesterday, they seem to have really small backpacks. So if they are planning on going rural, they are going to need to pick up additional supplies. On the road again. <laughs> Can we do this for 25 days? I reckon we could. <laughs> Listen, if we don't know where we are, they don't know where we are. Sandra and Mella. I went through their phone records today. Um, which took a long time because they phoned over a thousand people each and most of the calls were to completely different people so their friendship groups don't seem to overlap that much. Really it doesn't seem like their lives are very compatible, they seem quite separate. Can I have one Snickers bar? Snickers is finished. It's not. You finished your Snickers. Snickers is finished. Name. We've been friends since university, that which was ten years ago. We've been through relationship changes, you know, from motherhood to single motherhood. She's been there throughout the whole process. The Snickers is finished. No, it's the not. It's not there. It's Snickers. <laughs> 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 I'm the first thing he said. Tell me all about Majid. Majid is proving slippery at the moment. He came out of the back of the van, headed to the subway, went out the back of the subway, into a taxi, to a location to the southeast corner of the Arndale Centre. No further details. It all goes very quiet after that. We got a bit of catching up to do on him then. If you had to hide, say from the police, or you had to hide from the government, where where would you hide? Hardwick or Longside? Yeah, that you Long side. Long side. Okay. Okay. What do we know about Jamie? Jamie Clark, a former police officer with the Dorset Police. He has experience in surveillance. Uh, he has experience in uh, explosive means of entry. He has uh, extensive experience with uh, armed response. He's a level one driver. Who's his close associates he might rely upon? At this point, we've only got one close associate being his wife. My wife and my son and my family, they mean the world to me. And, and uh, I suppose having left the police a few years ago, I put our world into a bit of turmoil. A lot of ups and downs, and my wife supported me throughout that. The truth is, I am driven by this for the money. I want to ensure that she has what she needs, and so does my son. So I just feel a big pressure. Yeah, no time, it'll be weird. With a fish in a goldfish. I'm married uh, to my beautiful wife. We have a five and a half year old boy. And to be a dad, well, that's just amazing. With my upbringing, I didn't have really the father figure in my life that I want to be for my son, so I, I'd probably go overboard making sure that, you know, he has in me a, a dad that is reliable and dependable. <laughs> his dad was an alcoholic, um, a violent alcoholic towards his mother, so he's very, very protective. He was the one to step in and kind of get his mum out of the way and just somehow managed to come out of it positive and just the loveliest person because of it, so... <laughs> I just feel really lucky. Really lucky that he tries as hard as he does, despite being really busy, um, to find time to make our son feel just loved. Ready? One, two. <laughs> Guys, we want you to look into Jamie Clark. I believe he has a partner called Leslie, who's a serving police officer, and a young boy we've seen from social media. Obviously, that will be, hopefully, his Achilles heel that he's got to make contact with his partner and, and the son. Yeah. Obviously, any key dates you can draw up, certainly in the period of the run, might be really useful. OK. Do what you best at, guys. Let's get around there. <laughs> Hi. 
Hello, how are you? Hello, Leslie. You're pregnant. Uh, When's, when, when you're due? Uh, I'm not going to give you that. <laughs> oh, that's not information. That's not intelligent. I know. I What's know. wrong with you? You're very welcome. OK, you know why we're here, don't you? Yes. We're here for Jamie. When's the last time you saw him? Uh, when he left to drop off the train station. When you dropped him off at the train station? What equipment did he have with him? I'm not going to tell you. OK, um, so how are you going to be then? With obviously the bump. The bump. Then a little one, whilst whilst he's um, running around like a lunatic for the next however few days. Yeah, a few days, hopefully a few weeks. When are you actually due? You tell me that already. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I'm going to make you find it out yourself. Any updates? Yeah, so she's heavily, heavily pregnant. Ah. Uh, and I mean. Did any? Say any, any no, mate. She would not tell us. Like she would not tell us. It's really interesting. She didn't say the due date. It's obviously whilst he's on the run. Yeah. Um, and she knows yeah. that that is going to be an Achilles heel. He's going to potentially miss the birth of his child. I, how would anyone do that? Like, how would somebody be prepared to miss? Yeah, for 100k maybe. Yeah. What this tells me is that they are going to be in touch. There has to be a way for them to be in communication with each other because. You, you just wouldn't yeah. risk that. Um, we've spoken a lot about him going at the time when we're going to have another child, but you get one life and I'm fine with it. I would do all that I can to be there for the birth. I really don't want to have to miss this, and it would be a great thing to be able to achieve on the run. I would love to be able to be there. <laughs> I'd love the hunters not to know that I'm there. Even better. Is Jamie going to go back at some point to see his wife and the newborn child? That is a major point for us and something we have to be all across, making sure we don't miss a glaring opportunity to identify Jamie near the newborn child. I think that's a high possibility. If it's not and he doesn't go near the child, I want to catch him even more. The hunters are on the trail of former police firearms officer Jamie Clark. Yeah, there's no denying the fact of Jamie's background that he could be a very strong adversary. You know, he was a police officer, so essentially he's one of us. And now he's split coins, is he on the other side? That makes me want to catch him even more. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Hi guys. You alright? Alright. Return to Jamie Clark's home. Keep an eye out, and make sure that Leslie's not around, break into Leslie's house, yeah. and turn it completely upside down. Leslie has just left. Let's do it, huh? Let's do it. Let's go out the back, mate. I'm in. Just be aware that there's a turtle thing down there. Hi, it's Rich and Steve. We've managed to get into the property. The patio doors at the back were open. And there's no one else in the property, Rich? No, property's empty. Any sign of any um, office space? This is his office space. That's an award? Yeah. PC 1774. Jamie Clark, Tactical Firearms Unit, Dorset Police. He's got a Chief Constable's commendation as well for his time in the police force. There's quite a few pictures of him in the police, quite a few newspaper clippings, and with some quite big cases that he's worked on. Everything's really kind of laid out with an almost OCD tendency. OCD is exactly what I see. Just found a notepad. Following pages, as you can see, you've been ripped out. And then a few pages after that, there's four pages missing as well. OK, so can you make sure you see that? Yeah. That notebook could be absolute gold. When you write on a page, you leave an impression on the pages beneath. So even though he rips the pages out, once we submit that to the laboratory, we may get what was written on those pages.
Our first impression of Sandra and Mella, just going looking at their birth certificate. Sandra was born in Uganda and Mella in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. They obviously moved to the UK at a young age. Looking into their finances, their expenditure, there's quite a lot of Uber payments, which obviously says to me they're quite social individuals. They like to go out, socialise, you see them friends a lot. Looking back at their social media and whatnot, it's clear that they're both very athletically fit. Uh, one was an international tennis star. Sports people are inherently motivated with success, so they will want to win, given their backgrounds. I think we're in the countryside. I finally made it! We're in the country! Yay. Yes, we are. This is my first time. I really feel like a real backpacker. Met for you a mutual friend who just invited both of us out on the night out. Um, I still remember the top that you was wearing that night. It was like a halter neck top, and she was being really fussy about everything, making sure that everything's covered, and I was just trying to help her keep everything covered, like security. And um, just yeah, makes it sound like the top I was wearing was really scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> my youth is on. Oh my god, careful. We're both city girls, so we know the city life. I've driven through the countryside. I haven't stayed in the countryside. I mean, we went to a spa hotel once, so we stayed the night. It was in the countryside, it was really nice and peaceful and quiet, but I didn't stay outside and I didn't walk around on the grounds, to be honest with you. Um, we drove everywhere. I'm really missing my car. Just think, on a normal day, we'd be like, get our phones out and be like, oh, let's just get anywhere. Mm -hmm. and now journey planner. <laughs> TFL journey planner. I've always followed this blueprint life. It was like, go to university, do an internship, play tennis to professional level, buy a house, Everything that I did up until the point to now was always so regimented. So I want to have a Thelma and Louise moment where we just literally go and do something crazy and remember it for the rest of our lives. My biggest motivation is to prove to everyone that I think single mothers pick the easy way out by staying at home, that you can do anything you decide to put your mind to. But my ultimate goal is just the prize money at the end. For me and my boys, it makes such a difference. Oh, let's go on an adventure, she said. Fun, fun, fun. This will be all fun, she said. <laughs> Got us lifting freaking gates. I know. Makes a change than lifting the hoover. Sandra, we've got Grace, which is her mother. We've got her profile on Facebook, and we've also got a mobile phone number. Yeah, I've just checked it um, to make sure it is the mum's phone number, but Sandra called her 48 times, which is more than she's called anyone else, so I'm assuming it's the mum for now. HQ believe that Sandra will reach out to her mum, so they send ground hunters Zoe and Lucy to pay her mother a visit. Hello. Can I help Is you? it Grace? Yes, please. We're here to have a quick chat with you about Sandra. What's she like? What's Sandra she like? mixes with everybody. If you meet her in a train, yeah. she'll just talk to anybody. Oh, she's quite a friendly girl. She right. doesn't care who comes from anywhere. She just talks to him. She's friendly with everybody. Have you heard from her since Monday? Is she all right or do you know? No, I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard? No. No. Do you know where she is at the moment? I have no idea. No? So what other family do you have around here? To be honest, uh, I more or less grew up with more of Sandra than anything. Because obviously we've seen like men's shoes by the door. Have you got any other family members who she might contact? I think. No. I'm going to have to search the property. Okay. Suspecting Grace is withholding information. The hunters hack into her laptop, allowing HQ to live monitor her online activities. No one's been under roof since 1975. Grace, who's this person? Robert Amu Amule or Robert Amule. So, Grand Hunters Zoe and Lucy got photos of all the posts addressed to Mr. Robert Amule at the same address as Sandra's mother. The fact that he's living at the same house indicates that he might have a family bond there. So we're looking into whether Mr. O'Meal might be helping her whilst she's on the run. OK, so, Jamie, I want to establish where's she going to have that baby? What hospital will she go to? 
because maybe he just won't be able to resist sticking his head round the door, kissing his wife, kissing his newborn baby, and then going back Scar on the run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This morning, I got a little bit upset. Um, I just really don't let my wife down. And my wife, I know, is going for a tough time on her own at the house, and I think I just wish I could be there. I'm still on the outskirts of Manchester, so I might try and get some transport from somebody kind enough to give me a lift and I'd start moving my way down. Jamie had pitched his tent in a field belonging to local businessman Dougie Cronshaw. Good morning, Dougie. How are you? I'd just like to thank you sincerely very much for letting me have a useful field last night. You've by chance got a map or anything I could look at? I'm here, and I really want to be in these three squares, right? Inches away. Yeah, quite literally. <laughs> it's gonna sound really strange, but I've got I've got a wife at home with, with my little five-year-old boy, and she's pregnant, and she's due to give birth in less than two weeks. You have to wow. surrender. <laughs> no, I can't, I can't. I can't. We've got a C-section arranged. You know, my intention is, if I can, to try and sit to be there. But, but even now, if I was, I'd get emotional. Right. So I've got to get his tears away. Sorry. No, it's all right. no there's nothing wrong with emotion. I don't want to let my wife down, that's all. I want to make all this be worth it for her. And here I am at day three, getting upset. Sorry, mate, I do apologise. Oh, you're right. Start so thinking um, about my uh, family. Right, if you come with me. What I have is a friend who delivers all over the country. You're going to have to go within the next 10 minutes. I'm fine, thank you so much. I think it's going to be tearing him apart. It's the birth of his child. He'll want to be there to support his wife. But it's obvious, isn't it? It's obvious that that's a point where we'd want to investigate and we'd want to be. We'd want to try and catch him there. Hello, mate. Is it Chris? Yeah. Chris, I'm so sincerely thankful for this, mate. Absolutely. It's a, it's a godsend. I just need to get out of Manchester. With Dougie's help, Jamie secured a lift to the southwest from delivery driver Chris. But first, he has a plan. Chris, before we start heading back down, if you don't mind, I'm going to try and find a cash point just so the hunters think I'm still up here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I'll meet you in this road. You'll meet you in this road. Yeah. I'd love to be able to get out of here today. Somewhere where I can feel closer to my wife. So my plan is I'm going to go to a cash point, withdraw the money. That's going to give them the indicator that I'm still here. They'll be able to follow that up straight away. We're going to come back, get in the lorry, and get down south. Where are you going to be by the time hunters get here? Well, that depends on where they're coming from, but... and how long it takes me to get back to the truck. Yeah. OK, we've got a cash withdrawal from James Clark in Ramsbottom Berry. How much? Uh, £40. <laughs> Right, if this turns out to be him behind that cash machine, Nick and Dan there literally near Berry. We're striking distance. Ground hunters Nick and Danny have stayed in the Greater Manchester area and are using the surveillance van, a less conspicuous vehicle used for stakeouts. OK, guys, so we've had an ATM hit for Jamie Clark at 1328. The address of that is number 29 Bolton Street. It's a Santander in Ram's Bottom. Oh, cool. Steve, look out, Jamie boy. The girls are coming for you. What's that? Eight minutes. Eight, eight minutes. minutes. We're eight minutes away. We're right on his town. I'm now going to phone my wife quickly. Good. That is him. That is him. Oh, little git. He is a very smug, arrogant man doing that. I want to see him crushed yeah. when we catch him. We're on Bolton Street now. We literally need to keep our eye out because he could be absolutely anywhere. Just got to hop back to this road without getting caught. Man, similar description, dark jacket. Received. By the bush line. That right. Man, 
and similar description, dark jacket. What you got, guys? By the bush line. Stand by. Ground hunters Nick and Danny are closing in on former police officer Jamie Clark, who's just made an ATM withdrawal in Ramsbottom. He was walking at speed. It was literally a glimpse. Okay. Oh. That was the guy I saw. Yeah, it was. Is it a negative? It's a negative. It's not ID. It's not ID. God, where the fuck is he? OK, guys, so we've had some CCTV footage. In. Yeah. So as you come away from the ATM, he's turned left and north. So he's now northbound on Bolton Street. Looking at the mapping, there's no train station I can see that's close by. So I'm hoping he's going to stay on foot for a while. This is a matter of survival right now. Every decision we make, every plan we put into place, we need to try and make it so it might confuse him a little bit. Santander there on the right scene. Something like this is an instant trigger for us. Our instant triggers are if we've got a phone on monitoring, if we've got a card on monitoring, we get that instantly. If we've got a vehicle on monitoring, because it's all there's no humans involved, this is all just electronic. He knows all this, so I just wonder what he's up to. I think he's got a plan. I think in doing this, we're just playing them at their own game, so let's see how it works. Where on earth is he? Well, he's here somewhere, isn't he? If he's not in a car, he's not far. There he is. We had to park up the yard, didn't he? Can we get this junction here in case there's a pickup from a vehicle? If he's gone on foot. Yeah, if he's gone on foot, flagged a vehicle down, motorway, quick getaway. Yeah. Like you said, he's probably already planned it. If that was me, I know where the motorway is, I know where I can pick a lift up from. I'll be headed there, flagging a lift down, boom, on the motorway, I'm gone. As planned, delivery driver Chris is ready and waiting for Jamie. Yes, sir. Seems to have worked. It does, doesn't it? I know, I know. You got 25 days free? No. Damn. Okay, so we're just going over it, putting some meat on the bones and trying to work out what the hell's gone on. We are working on the basis that he could have got a lift in the area, jumped out the car, gone to the ATM, got the money out, got back in the yeah. car, and gone. It's just, I think there's a bit of a release. Feel the pressure's off a bit. And there's a sign that says the southwest. I don't want to be too euphoric, but I've, I think this is in the bag today. This is the reason why Jamie Clark has done this, but it's for moments like this. At the moment, he'll be exhilarated, he'll be triumphant. This is what he wanted, knowing we're chasing, knowing we're not at him, but we're chasing. <laughs> it's starting to be a game now. So yesterday, they went into Grace's address mm -hmm. and installed a back door in her laptop. And we got remote access, so we got full control of it. As part of their strategy to locate Sandra and Mella, HQ are live monitoring the computer belonging to Sandra's mum, Grace. I've been sort of watching her all day. We managed to take some recordings of her webcam and stuff. Communications in with Grace, the mum, is extremely interesting. Well, Sandra's on the phone with her mum a lot. They're constantly in contact, phone calls, etc. So if something does That's feature, right, yeah. will you let us know? A lot of the time, you don't know who to trust when you're on the run. So we plan to make sure that we still stay undetected. We want to be super, super careful and see if we can settle down with one of our whole families, just so we're in a safe place. Sandra and Mella have hitchhiked and used coaches to travel over 200 miles to Edinburgh. They're now trying to find the flat belonging to Sandra's uncle. Excuse me, sorry, mate. Do you know where I can find View Craig Street? This building here? This building. Oh, is the entrance that side? Great stuff. Is there no other entrance? Is it, is it this side here? Oh, wow. Sake. Let me just go around first. There must be a back route. Ah! No! No, 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 no! How is it? Directly opposite to the camera. <laughs> How do you want to do this? Do you want to, like, get a bin and walk inside the bin? <laughs> Should we do... Do you have bin bags? Do you have bin bags from...? Yeah, I do, actually. Fuck it. We don't want to be seen on CCTV cameras, like. <laughs> Kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> Come on, I can see from one eye. I'll go the other way. You go that way. 
Okay, I'm coming in. I can't find my eye. <laughs> I'm in. He better be in. Hello? Uncle Emma, it's me. Yes, he's in. <laughs> This is crazy. Yeah, you sleeping? Yeah, oh my yeah, god! Do you know how hard it's been to get this apartment? Yeah. I'm so glad we're in. Oh, how are you? I got in for the Waju house yesterday. What? Yes. Uh, At my house? Yes. <sighs> Ransacked the whole house. Are you kidding me? Yeah, looking for you. I'm sure these guys would walk in here anytime. Yeah. Wow. I think the hunters are probably trying to suss us out right now. They're probably thinking, what are these girls doing? We want to be super, super careful. We need to make sure that we don't leave any traces behind. Mum, we're leaving, we're leaving. Oh, you are not there. Shh, shush, please, please, please. We're leaving, OK, we're leaving, Uncle Emmett. We're leaving the place right now. We're going to get out. Spooked by the knowledge her home has been searched, Sandra calls her mum for help. She uses a new SIM card with a phone number unknown to the hunters. Robert needs to book a flight to Glasgow. Tell him to bring two sleeping bags. And, Mum, he needs to bring money. Mum, Mum, let me give you the number. Mum, let me give you the number. 07506 2855. Yeah, that's it. OK? All right. OK, bye. It's a random journey for Sandra's brother to be taken to Glasgow. The end goal is, you know, we get the resources that we need and Sandra's brother can get to us without being followed and we can literally go back into hiding underground where they won't have any idea of what's happened or what's gone on. we just got to keep making changes all the time. Sandra and Mella have taken a taxi out of Edinburgh. Their plan is to head for the hills. I'm paranoid now, as in, like, people paranoid. I was paranoid before, but it wasn't like this. Now I'm like, I can't even cross the road. I can't cross the road, I can't look at anyone without thinking that they could be the hunters. Every single person, car, I'm just wondering if it's them. We've kind of lost track with Jamie at the moment, so we're trying to hack into his emails. We're looking at his wife's phone records. And Stephen Rich also found a blank page in a book at the property, so we're going to get that examined to see if there's any residual intelligence on there for us. The blank page found at Jamie's home is given an electrical charge and lightly sprayed with black toner, which slowly reveals the indentations. Hello. Black. Do you want me to talk through what I found on the indented impression? Yes, please. So we got to Zoe, collect on way home on second, then Sarah, fetch me home from hospital on second. That's next week. That could be very helpful for us. OK. If this is saying, fetch me home from the hospital on the second, then it might be a planned caesarean. I think you're right. So I think that Leslie Clark is going to have the baby at Dorchester Hospital because she's called the that? maternity unit quite a few times. Dorchester? Fantastic. Yep. That is music to my ears, Angela. Great work. We've got a date, we've got a location. What we really need to do now is essentially put a ring of steel around that hospital to monitor any traffic going in and out. If he does go there, what route is he likely to take and where can we catch him? I'm a fugitive on the run. I'm being hunted by a team of professional hunters. OK. I'm desperately trying to find my way back to the Devon-Dorset border. Right. My wife's pregnant. She's due to give birth next week, and I was desperately trying to get back to sort of even be there for the birth if I could, which is next week. <laughs> Where do you want to head to? Oh, anywhere's fine. Just even the coast is fine. Obviously, I'm in Tivert, and I, I don't want to be here, with respect. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. It's my wife's fault. <laughs> And I do obviously owe you a lot for this, so I'm very, very thankful to you guys. Well, you're doing it for your family, aren't you? So... Well, I am, yeah, I can't talk about it, so I'm getting upset. That's just hay fever now. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> Blimey. My wife, she's a really strong woman. I bet she wasn't impressed, though. No, she's been fully on board. I couldn't have done this without the support of my wife. Is 
Zoe and Luce, we're just following up on the letter you found at Sandra's mum's house. It was addressed, if you remember, to a, a Robert O'Mule. Yep. We really need to pay him a visit to find out what he knows now, guys. All right, we'll update you later on. Nice to meet you. Got your phone at hand, please, Robert. Yeah, how are you? We've been working on the girls, Sandra and, and Mella. Do you know Mella as well? Yeah. You, you know them both? Yeah. Do you know one of them better than the other? Or you know them both sort of? Who did you know first? Uh, my sister, of course. Is she, so, yeah. Sandra is your sister? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. That's right, okay, okay. When was the last time you spoke to her? I haven't spoken to her. But you yeah. was expecting her to contact you at some point. And what? Yeah, I was expecting her. Have you heard through like the Friends Network and the Grapevine why she hasn't called you yet if you was expecting it? Um, no, no, I haven't. Perhaps she's doing better than they thought they would do? She's doing quite well? Have you heard uh, that she's doing well? Well, I haven't, I, I don't know anything, yeah. No? Yeah. No, you uh, did a little smile, you had a little so, smile then, didn't so, you? you give me what does I don't know well, anything yeah this. mean? Sorry? What does I don't know anything yeah mean? You give me a little smile then, Robert, didn't you? Did I say that? Yeah, yeah that's what you yeah. said. We're listening. No, no. Yeah. no I didn't. You did? Yeah. So, Robert, you all right just to, just to empty your pocket so I can see what you've got in him, please? Right, OK. Empty that out. Just open up your tissue just so I can see there's nothing. OK? And then this one, do the same for this one, please. Right, so this is what's in this pocket here. There's a load yeah. of leads. Yeah. What's this for? Oh, uh, I remember this, son. Huh? Can't remember. I don't know There's obviously a, a mobile number written on this piece of paper, and when I found it, I could see in your face that you was not happy. So what's this what for? Uh, uh, is this Sandra's number? Uh, it is, isn't I it? I think so. Hmm? I don't know. No, it's Sandra's number, isn't it? Hmm? It's Sandra's number. OK. So what happens if I ring this number now? Hello, Sandra, where are you? I don't know anything about that. You don't know anything about your nice clean <laughs> jeans that you've put on that happens to have a phone Pizza. number written on a bit of paper in your pocket that when I found it, your whole world just fell out of your backside? Uh, I don't know. Mm. This oh. is so cool. How do we make sure it stays down? Sandra and Mella have made it to the outskirts of Glasgow in preparation for a supply drop from Robert. I want to see what's coming. No, no, two other way. I'll no, you can see what's coming because you've got the window. Then that way it means you can run that side. <laughs> oh, I like your idea of thinking, eh? Window, window, window. One of the numbers I've put in for a subscriber check has come back as an unregistered EE pay-as-you-go phone, so that could be a burner phone. And which, um, which phone number was that? Robert O'Mule's. OK, so that number that was found in his pocket today? Yep. So and this is not a registered pay as you, yeah. go, as you go. So we need to get that on everything, location. We've got a cell site monitoring request for it. Um, do you want it on intercept as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The thing is, I mean, it's, it's all just a blooming gamble. It's, it's all quite we, speculative, really. He knows that we know that number now. Hello? They have got this number. It's good. They have got this number from Robert. It's good. And don't use it completely now. OK? Julie? Yeah? We've got a call on the burner phone for Sandra Canroom. <laughs> Connected to the cell tower e 3 g 69 rl They're in Scotland. Scotland? God damn, we just moved George and Karen out of Scotland. Oh, blimey. We have nobody in Scotland. Is it still going according to plan? Yeah, it's never they have it now. Oh, I know they may be is this a cell site? Yeah, so this is the cell site, and we're just waiting for the intercept to come through now as well. Is that the Robert's number? That's the number that we got off Robert, yeah. Give me that postcode again, please. Golf 697 Romeo Lima. Calder Bank View, Glasgow. We've got the intercept now. Hello? They've got this number. It's good. They've got this number from Robert. It's good. So describe the SIM card. Quick, take it out. Hello, right, we want you in Glasgow. Why dream it? We're looking for Sandra and Mella. Come on! Don't just get him!
After intercepting a phone call, HQ focused their resources on Sandra and Mella. That cell tower, the azimuth, is almost in the middle of nowhere in this park, but there is a caravan park there. So it's round about here somewhere, is it? Yeah, so just there. Any yes. camping? Um, I think at the caravan park there might be a camping associated with right, that. Right, Steve, as a matter of urgency, we get those CCTV requests in. OK. Right? Hello? This is Chief. We had a live intercept of a telephone conversation in London last night where a fugitive spoke to who we believe was her mother on the other end. Understood, yeah. With ground hunters Nick and Danny still two hours away, the chief deploys a local ghost agent. We've received an azimuth for the location. We know that there's cameras nearby. Should you see these two girls, we ask you to try and keep them under surveillance as best as you possibly can. Ghosts are professional surveillance operatives who can't reveal their identity. Obviously, you're not authorised to make a capture, but our ground hunter team are on their way to you. Please that with me, Peter. Cheers, I'm very much obliged to you. We're leaving Glasgow. We're heading back down south. We are no longer going to meet for sleeping bags or money. We are off to Kent. We are going to hitchhike all the way. It's very likely that they know that we're in Glasgow, so we want to disappear as quick as possible. How much traces have we left behind? Depends on that phone call. Yeah. Depends on that last phone call that we got. Um, you know, we're listening on the phone call or were able to geolocate us, then. Yes, they are aware of exactly where we were. Strategy at the moment, we've got surveillance in the area. We've got a ground hunter team approximately two hours away. But let's say surveillance operatives gets a positive ID on Sandra and Mella. He will conduct surveillance on the pair until a ground hunter team gets there to apprehend them. Into the arms of Nick and Dan. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? CCTV for today. This is from the country park. That's them leaving. Oh, what time is that? 8.29. This morning? Yeah. But I'm glad they're there this, mo this morning. They could have left yesterday. So they've come out of here, turned right. It's dual carriageway, motorway, large roundabout. Perfect territory for hitchhiking. We can get a long way from there very, very quickly. Yeah, that's my fear. We think they've come out of this entrance here. They may not backtrack that way through that because really there's there's no way really to walk that way, whereas this way, if they come down here, there's a path. We just need to lay low because once we lay low, we'll have nothing for them to go on. Having nothing for them to go on means they don't lose. They take their attention to everyone else. But the key thing is where they exiting this park. Well, yeah, because the main entrance is right down there. And that takes them right, right to Junction 6. We could always pick them up, couldn't we? That's exactly what I'm going to tell the ghosts. Pick them up and take them straight to the ground. That's exactly what I'm going to tell him. If they're hitchhiking, we give them a lift. Yeah, it's the chief again. We suspect they may be hitchhiking, and they've definitely left the country park with what appears to be their backpacks and their gear. Can you make your way to junction six of the Mike 74 and do a roving patrol of that junction and associated dual carriageways? And if you happen to see two girls with backpacks looking for a lift, would you please let them get in your car? If you do pick them up, take them to the next services and Nick and Dan will capture them. No problem at all. Find those girls for me, find those girls. That would be fucking brilliant. Yeah. Wouldn't it? I would laugh. It would be really I would funny. laugh all day long. <laughs> Don't get it. A little safer than the camp over here, although I'm not feeling totally relaxed just because we need to get out of Glasgow. So still positive identifications of the girls in that area. They were seen exiting the southern end of the country park. If they're still on foot walking, we'll conduct surveillance and lock you guys on when you get there. If they are looking to hitch a ride, then the surveillance unit will pick them up and drive them straight towards you. Here we come, into Scotland. Let's get them in the bag, lady.
Why, I saw two people on the southbound slip at Junction 6. Yes, yes, all received. And just round this corner, I had sight on them just a minute ago. Received. Calling in now to try and see if we'll do a pickup. They were trying to go for a pickup. Yes, received. Right, stay on. If I hang up, I'm approaching them and then I'll be speaking to them. Yes, yes. Please do be there. Please do be there. Please be there. Right, I'm going for a pickup. Yes, received. Keep going, so slow, come on. Oh, so thank you, thank you. Yes. Hello. What are you off to me? We're hitchhiking. What are you hitting? <laughs> I'm good at Leicester. Yes, perfect. perfect. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you don't understand, you've made our day. Thank you. Taking us so far away, it's just I, mean, I, can't, I can't believe it. Stand by, we have control of Sandra and Mella. I am pumped. OK, off, off, off. Oh, my God. Yes. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fuck it. We know the dads are Mason. Freemasons stretch the length and breadth of the country, and they're going to help him. We're absolutely positive he's in that area. Fuck, fuck, fuck. This guy's on the edge. I'm feeling trapped. All I need to do right now is get away. Jesus Christ. Big, drafty, tafty. Oh, police! <laughs>